the seven princes of hell and the seven chakras that they possess on today's episode of the Magister Sanctum. Greetings, everyone. I'm Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's episode, where we are going to talk about demons and demonology. Now, personally, I think if you call yourself a light worker, you should also believe that evil is out there. I become very leery about people who who do call themselves that and they think that it's just about love and light and it's just about a one-sided deal because it really isn't. Demonic energy is real. I've experienced it myself. I've seen it myself. I've seen people's people's eyes turn black. I've seen their eyes turn reptilian. Um, the reptilian slit. I... I haven't seen it in a while, but it doesn't mean that it's not there. Um, but yes, in, in my experience, demons do exist. And I've also read certain literature in psychology, and I can see how a lot of people will, can, can compare demonic energy to, or, you know, they, they can compare it to the subconscious or, or the id or, you know, any of these type of psychological elements. But from my experience, I believe that's one way to label it, but also demons have a tendency to jump from person to person. And when you see the same demonic energy staring back at you from different people's faces, I don't think that we can say it's just it's just psychology at that point. Again, the, the what we're going to do is go through the chakras and talk about the demons that possess those certain chakras. As I've said in, in my previous video, every chakra has a sin, and every demon is in control of one of the prime evils or one of the sin. So there is one prince of hell for one deadly sin. Now, in the demonic world, there is a lot of hierarchy, and we have a lot of underlings which work for one of the princes of hell but ultimately they all respond and they all report back to one of the princes of hell so it doesn't matter if you are you know let's say attacked by an underling or a lesser demon as long as you know what chakra it's attacking and as long as you know which prince of hell rules over that that deadly sin you can ask your guides to help you exercise that demon from your chakra and to protect you from future influence. Okay, so let's start with the crown chakra. So the crown chakra, the, the sin of the crown chakra is the sin of pride. And as we all know from the movies and the TV shows, Lucifer is is the fallen angel which rules over the sin of pride. Lucifer was cast out of heaven because of the sin of pride, because he challenged God, because he thought he was better than God. And that should also go as a lesson to humans that none of us are more powerful or better than God. God is beyond all of us. So don't even think that we can understand or interpret the will of God or, or any of that, because it's beyond our comprehension, even for an angel. It's beyond their comprehension, too. So Lucifer, the demon of pride, or I should say the ruler of the sin of pride, is, is able to possess the crown chakra. So when we, follow, when, when we find ourselves falling into the sin of pride, that is the demon that we must exercise. That, that's the demon that we have to call upon our guides to exercise Lucifer out of our crown chakras. All right, moving right along is the third eye chakra. Now, the third eye chakra is susceptible to the sin of wrath. It's when, it's when our understanding gives way to anger. And Satan is the demon which rules over the sin of wrath. Satan comes in and he basically makes us doubt ourselves. He 
has a lot of the trickster energy too. The ability to, to make yourself think twice, the ability to doubt yourself. And we find that when we enter into a state of confusion, when we enter into a state of wrath, Satan is, is the culprit behind that. Satan or one of his underlings. And again, it doesn't matter. You don't have to know the underling name as long as you know that Satan has the ability to possess your third eye, then you can call upon your guides to exercise Satan from your third eye. So you can go back into a state of understanding and a state of bliss and a state of being able to, to not have that doubt and confusion and that anger. Okay. The next demon is Belphegor, and Belphegor possesses the, the throat chakra. The throat chakra is the sin of sloth. It can be susceptible to the sin of sloth, or which I have also synonymously called depression. And Belphegor, when we find his demonic presence creeping into our lives, that is when, well, I, I should say he's responsible in, in traditional uh, mythology for, let's say, get-rich-quick schemes. He's responsible for cutting corners, um, you know, the, the, those types of energies. And I find it that, that when we do fall into the sin of sloth, uh, when, when we do begin to become lazy or depressed, we have a tendency to look to cutting corners in order to get ourselves out of that. Or we have a tendency to fall prey to, let's say, the get-rich-quick schemes. We have a tendency to fall prey to gambling, to, to, to certain elements like that, because we have a tendency to associate money with lifting us out of our depression. But again, if we don't, if we don't analyze those reasons as to why we are depressed in the first place, no amount of money will ever lift us out of that depression. So that is how Belphegor begins to influence us. And again, ask your guides, ask the Most High for protection and to help you exercise the demon Belphegor from your throat chakra so you can be lifted out of your depression, so you can begin to be you again, to communicate, to begin to experience that joy and be in you as well. All right, moving right along. The next demon, which influences the heart chakra, is the demon Leviathan, okay? Now, I've relabeled the heart chakra as, as a spirit, and it draws upon, or I, I believe that, that the heart draws its energy from the spirit, and that is what allows us to live our lives with courage. And when we do not, we find that we begin to fall into the sin of envy because we envy other people who have the courage to live their lives. And it's really interesting that Leviathan is, is a deep sea monster because water in general has a strong association and tie to the spiritual world. Neptune is also the, the, the god of the sea and many times we we find Neptune's influence associated with with mysticism with spirituality Neptune also rules over the house of Pisces which is also a very spiritual and mystical house so I think it's very fitting that Leviathan too is a monster from the deep and Leviathan is a very envious demon uh, and so again when we find ourselves slipping into jealousy, into envy, when we start to covet other people for their abilities and what they have, that is when we begin to find ourselves and our heart chakras becoming possessed by the demon Leviathan. So call upon your guides, call upon the Most High to help protect you and to help exercise the demon Leviathan from your heart. All right, moving right along, we have Beelzebub. Beelzebub is the demon of gluttony. And I've associated the sin of gluttony with the stomach chakra. The stomach chakra, again, the reason why we fall into the sin of gluttony 
is because we begin to lose empathy for the animals and for the people in our lives. It's when we begin to to have no boundaries and we just basically become ravenous and gluttonous. So when we begin to enter into that sin, when we are not mindful of what we are consuming or when we are not mindful of the people around us, it's it's usually, well, it, it is the, the influence of Beelzebub. And Beelzebub was called the Lord of the Flies. Beelzebub is a demon that who, whose gluttony knows no end. He was said to have devoured his own throne as well. So, again, when you find yourself losing that empathy, call upon your guides. Usually, it's Beelzebub's influence and ask them to help exercise that demon, that prince of hell, from your stomach chakra. Okay, moving right along. We have Asmodeus. Asmodeus is the demon of lust. And lust has a tendency to infiltrate the sacral chakra or the the sexual chakra, however you want to call it. So Asmodeus is a very lustful demon. He has a tendency to, to seduce women by pretty much killing their husbands. So Asmodeus is the demon of lust. He, he basically kills the husbands to go after the wives. He doesn't like to see happy couples. He doesn't like to see um, couples in bliss or, or any of that kind of stuff. So that's, that's Asmodeus' role, is as the demon of lust. And when we find ourselves entering into a state of lust, and again, as, as I said in, in a previous in, in my previous video, you know we, we enter into states of lust because we are starting to lose that joy within ourselves. When Asmodeus starts to, to enter our lives, that is when the joy leaves and that is when we start to become filled with lust. So again, ask your guides for help and exercising Asmodeus from your sacral chakra and protection as well. Okay, moving right along. Last but not least, we have the demon Mammon, which is the demon of greed. And it's interesting because in certain translations, people aren't quite sure if Mammon is the name of the actual demon or if it is the name for money. But either way, I mean, money and greed pretty much go hand in hand when we are possessed by Mammon. Now, there's nothing wrong with money as long as we have, you know, I mean, it, it's a tool that, that we all have to use. But when it becomes greed, it's when we start to pursue money for money's sake. It's when we start to pursue money for power and control. And we... We basically take more than what we need. That is when we become under the influence of the demon Mammon. As I've said in, in previous videos, the reason why we fall under greed is because we become disconnected. Because the, the root chakra is all about connection. It's all about connecting us to Mother Earth, to Gaia. It's all about understanding how we are connected into the ecology. And as we begin to lose that connection, that's when we fall under the sin of greed. That's when we start to pursue money for money's sake. And we are not mindful of how we ravage or destroy the earth or other people's lives to pursue money. That's all Mammon's influence. So again, call upon your guides when you find yourself becoming greedy. Of course, that's always easier said than done. But call upon your guides to help to help exercise Mammon from your root chakra. So that's it for today. I hope, I hope you all got something from this, and I hope to see you on the next video as well. Thanks for watching. I love you all, and see you guys later. Now we are going to close with the chant of Obleron. 
A un de i sote, a un de i obleron, a un de i sote, a un de i obleron. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. If you resonate with what you are seeing or hearing, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share Obleron's content. It really helps him to spread the word and to grow his channel and pages. Collective readings are posted Mondays on the High Priestess's Circle. Teachings are posted Wednesdays on the Magister's Sanctum, and the music from those episodes are posted Fridays on the Empress's Theater. Posters and merch related to Obleron's teachings are available at obleron.square.site. Music from the episodes is also available at obleron.bandcamp.com. Obleron is spelled O-B-L-Y-R-O-N. Lastly, don't forget to connect with the community on Discord. It's called the Magister's Council, and look for the invite link in the description boxes and profiles below. There are astrology and wellness bots, as well as games and discussion forums available for free. There is also an exclusive members-only section with additional content and live streams for subscribers. Obleron also takes inquiries for services through Discord. In case you missed anything, all the links are available in the description boxes and profiles below. Thank you everyone, and much love to all.